This is a uh, video all about the uh, servicing of Metropolitan Vickers unit switches. This particular unit switch is a motor group switch from U2, uh, which we've just picked up off the pile. Now I'm just going to go quickly through with you what items you need to do this. One thing you will need is air. So we have air here with a half inch nipple. We will need that so we can do our testing. We also need various tools, various size spanners, sockets, so on and so forth. And you also need a very large screwdriver. Okay, let's go through and start. As you see, another thing you will also need is probably something like this. Now this is my junk pile. This is junk switches. Uh, the each switch that we do throws up curve balls, throws up strange things that need replacing or aren't working or are out of alignment. So we have a group of uh, shall we say scrap switches here which consist of a lot of spare parts that we've been using to fix the other ones so you'll also need a, a little cache of spare parts as well okay to begin we need to start by testing the switch so we're going to put our half inch nipple in there and we're going to connect our air and we're just going to see how it works straight out of the box and you can hear that it's pretty quiet there's not a lot of blowback from the off valve there's plenty of blowback from the on valve though you can clearly see that the grease has been recently replaced. We know that these particular switches are the ones that were overhauled at Elkar, so the uh, piston is in good condition. But clearly the valve is not, and the rest of the switch is in very good condition either. So we just like to start by testing what happens when you actually fire up the air on each switch. Okay, that done, we're also going to inspect the switch. Now quite often what you can find is that some of these are out of alignment. See how that one moves around? That shouldn't be like that. That should be solid. And also sometimes these contacts are not aligned properly and we need to undo the contacts and realign them to make sure that they line up properly. You can see that that arcing horn there is a little bit off centre, pointing a little bit to one side. So when we get to the, the fact that we can actually get access to that, we'll fix that up. Okay, first things first. We start these beasts with a bit of... Well, this next case 226, but WD-40 will do the job just as well. And we just treat those screws at the top there. Let that build into there. And also tip it over the other side. And let some settle down to there as well, because that's one of the first things we're going to take off. Okay. But the first thing we're going to take off is it'll, this little piece here at the top. So... That's no good, we need a 14. One thing you need to get used to with red set parts is that everything's different, there's no standard. Bolt heads are different, threads are different, you never know what's gonna hit next. So we're gonna start by pulling that piece off the top there. Okay, that comes off like that. All right, next will be to see if we can loosen these screws. And it's going to be pretty hard to do. Don't have to take them out at this stage, just loosen them. Just loosen, don't take out. Other side. Okay, we've loosened all those. Now, next is to undo this top piece here, which is all 14 mil. So they should just be able to come straight off there like that. A little bit of gentle persuasion to get those insulation pieces off there. You can probably get the small piece off first. Next stage is to undo this piece here, which we've noticed is already loose. Going to need a long 14mm piece for that. Yes, that already was quite loose. Okay, now this section is loose, we can undo these screws and that whole section will fall apart. Take these screws out. Might be a little bit 
I threaded that one to be tight. I think we'll undo these two first. Do that one last. Okay, now that should just slide up like so. Might need a bit of gentle persuasion. That piece comes out. And then that comes out. That comes out. And those come out. And that piece comes out of the middle there usually. So there we go, we've disassembled the top half. Now we've got clear access to the contacts and any adjustments that need to be made here. <coughs> See that little adjustment there? That's what adjusts this horizontally and that may need to be adjusted on this one because we can see that it's moving just a little bit that way or maybe this one needs adjusting here, but we'll deal with those shortly. The other part of the switch that we need to disassemble is the valve, which is this piece. So we start by taking that off. Take the plunger out. Take the pin out, which we might need to get a pair of long nose pliers for. Then we need to take off the coil cover. Now these usually just need a slight tap. So we get a screwdriver and we'll just tap them like that. Tap them up like that. And then it should just gently be able to get worked off like that. Then we've got the coil. You need a nice big spanner, 26mm for that one. They should never be done up tight, they should only be just hand tight really those, otherwise you can crack the coil. That piece comes out, the coil comes off, and we're left with this little piece here. It looks like to me like it's undone itself. That pin is supposed to be in there. Okay, then we take the top off the block, which might need a screwdriver to stop that spinning. This is the block here, what we call the block. More leverage required. all that will need to be cleaned now this is our bottom this is our off pin which is sticking out here we need to take that off 21 inch 21 millimeter spanner for that one mm. of course straight on the floor standard and push the pin and the spring out as well and basically now we have our switch disassembled enough to be able to clean and polish which is what we will start doing next now different people have different opinions on how we should clean and polish I prefer to use kerosene uh, because it very easily gets all the oily gunk off it's not so good on your fingers but I'll live with that all these pieces that we have here all need to be cleaned and brushed with kerosene. Now you can, for smaller parts you just dry them off with a rag. Larger parts we use the air to blow them off.
don't need to be spotless, just have all the gunk taken off them. The reason I like to use kerosene is because it leaves a nice thin protective film on everything. So once the switch is clean and back in service, it just leaves this thin, super thin film of, of oil on there, which prevents it from corroding. Right, these units, they can be cleaned. Just give them a good brush off with the toothbrush. Put that aside. The other one. That's those components cleaned. Now we can direct attention towards the switch frame itself. And the first thing we need to do is we need to polish it all up. So all this is pretty worn off. That is a brand new contact as you can see, but it's been sitting in, the <coughs> in air for 30 years and it's actually quite, quite uh, corroded. So we're gonna have a look at that. Looks all right. There's no real problems with that. These are a little bit now that can actually be turned by hand, so that's probably all that was wrong with that. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get the wire brush and we're going to give it a good clean. See how that's uh, polishing that up nicely. <coughs> Continue. much one side done. All right, there we go. Let's see our <coughs> contacts all nicely polished up there. Yes, nice and done. We'll just clean it. There's a little bit there I haven't quite done enough. We'll get all the oxides and stuff off there. Okay, now before we put the wire brush away, we need to do these two pieces at the back. Just in case of cleaning off all the rust and stuff from that thread particularly. Otherwise the nut's not going to go back on there and that's where the uh, the copper braid connects, <coughs> which needs to be clean. Doesn't need to be super clean. That's more than enough. Okay, there's two other things that we need to clean with that. These two little contacts on the coil here. Just polish those up like that. There you go. Put that away now. Right now, before we clean the main part of the switch, we're going to clean all these valve components. Anything that's rusty like that should also be given a bit of a clean. If anything, just to prevent it from rusting any further. Because as I said, the, the Kero does provide a little bit of a protection against atmospheric rust. So if we just do that with that, that's enough. The coil is okay to be bathed in Kero, so just give it a good clean. Get any dust and muck off it. And don't forget inside there as well needs to be cleaned out. Uh, this little insulating plate, it's very important to clean that. 
because lots of gunk gets on that and compromise the insulation just want to give that nice clean doesn't have to look super smick but at least it hasn't got gunk hanging off it plunger This little piece here, don't forget to clean the thread. And we use a little pipe cleaner to clean the inside of that. That's all it needs. And we'll just blow the stuff out of the middle of that with the air. This piece needs a good clean. Don't forget that little copper slug goes with that. Now this little thing here, <clears throat> you don't have to, but I usually like to polish it up. It's a case of holding it with your hand and getting it in the right spot. Turning it around. doesn't do it don't have to be silver as but it just gets the corrosion off and then the side frame what I usually do is just hold it like that and roll it Particularly the inside. Comes up nice and shiny. There we go with that. Now these, you can wash them if you like, but these are probably going to end up being replaced anyway. That's our on pin. The other little one's our off pin. The problem with these, of course, is the rubber in there, which we have yet to find a solution for. But for the moment, we're just using these ones. These parts are readily and easily changeable from the front of the group once the group is reassembled. So we don't need to worry too much about changing them now. But we will clean them up. Okay. Uh, these probably don't need cleaning, I think they're okay. This is the only other component that will need cleaning. Wherever there's a little nook and cranny and you want to get the gunk out, yeah. Okay, now the time has come to clean the switch itself. And since we're not going to disassemble it anymore, actually before we clean it, we're just going to have a look at these adjustments. See how that's over to one side? That shouldn't be like that. That should be in the middle. So we're just going to see if we can make a few adjustments to get that right. If we loosen that a little bit, it should enable us to just tap that around so that it's right in the middle. Don't want to loosen off too much. I'm not going to take the thing completely apart. We just want to make a little adjustment to that. It's already nearly there. 
that's not too bad at all it's actually more or less right in the middle now that's probably enough so I think we'll just do that back up it's looking a lot better now than it was before it was almost scraping there this contact as you can see is also a little bit skew with so we're just going to loosen that and tight and uh, and straighten it up as well should be a bit better okay that's straight that's straight that's not too bad I think we'll reassemble that and we'll give it a clean one way that you can just test that actually I can't test that at the moment well you can always just close it manually with the screwdriver let's close it up and see if it mates yeah it's not too bad it's pretty pretty well mating properly yep I'm very happy with that that's good okay that's nice and flat I don't think we're going to have any problem with that mech now right now we'll move on to the process of cleaning the switch in which case we put the whole switch into the bath and just use the toothbrush to just brush all parts of it down thoroughly each time we do it we just take a little pot and we just finish by rinsing it off so if there's any gunk still on there it'll just wash it off into the bath tip it over do the same on the other side it's a bit dirtier this side obviously this was the side that was facing up when it was in the crate at Redfern so I'm going to clean all that gunk off it over and under everything there and a rinse what's going on with this thing tip it upside down do the bottom half it's usually a good idea to just push the switch up from this bit where's the uh, screwdriver just push that up shove that in there somewhere no so we can just get that bit there nice and clean this here's an insulator very important to keep that clean and of course all these red bars here are all insulator as well if they get damaged it's going to go short circuit and that means it's going to go bang this thing here is the auxiliary bar that's the thing which activates the auxiliary contacts when it's all back together just get under there like that You've got the valve seat to wash give that a really good wash and then when that whole side's done we'll give it a good rinse okay other side Size so not too bad, pretty clean. Underside, all right, <clears throat> let's give that final rinse off. Now we take it out and then we go outside and give it a blow off. Okay. OK, 
Okay, it's cleaned all our assembled parts. Looking nice and clean. Everything's lined up as nice and straight as it's going to be. So I think it's probably time to start reassembling. Pretty much a reverse of the last, except what I do is I do the top half first. So, that means putting that back in there. Those go on either side, like so. Then, this goes in that way, onto there like that. This all has to be done loosely before you can do it up tightly. But it might even be best if we put one of those on first, so I think I'll do that. So I usually start by always putting a dab of oil on every one of these threads because one day someone's going to have to get it undone again. Don't do it all the way up, just loose for the moment. Turn it over. Same with this one. Dab of oil. Just loose, not tight at all. So getting those roughly in each position, then this goes down over on top of them, which is not always easy to do. Might have to do it with it upright. Everyone has their own way of doing this. There we go. That's in. So just slide it down there like that. Then what I do is I put all of the other screws in just loose. Do not cross these threads or you'll never get them right again. Quite often these screws are cross-threaded or the heads are damaged. That is where you need your spare parts and you just get another good one from another switch. But fortunately for this one, one of the few ones I've done where all of them are okay. They just go straight in, look at that good. Okay, we need to do a bit of alignment now because you can see that's loosely attached to that. This has to go in the middle. See how that moves like that? That has to sit in the middle like that. So it's kind of a case of holding it there at the same time as doing this up. So usually you can see a mark where it used to be. You can see kind of a mark there where it used to be. So it needs to go as high up as it can. It certainly can't afford to touch that because it'll short out with that. That's live. So we'll just get that on, we'll get the nuts on there but not too tight. We'll also just put a little bit of oil on those just to treat the threads nice. Okay now let's get this straight. That's about there, that's nice and straight. About equal. So if we can pretty much do it up there, if we can get a little bit higher that's good, but it, the fact that it's straight is the most important thing. You kind of have to have three hands here where you're holding the thing and also 
doing it up at the same time just gently like that or check again yep that's pretty good that is pretty good and lined up so we can it's still a distance away from there that'll be pulled down a bit by the other insulator so we can tighten those up that's in position now Then, that's the point at which we tighten all these screws up, but they don't need to be tightened up like crazy. Just nicely finger tight will do. Like that. Like that. Like that, that's fine don't need to be super duper tight or you'll never get them off again some poor soul will be having trouble getting them off next time there beautiful wipe down that should all be in position now that's quite good I think I've a little bit of caro still dripping out of that one it doesn't matter yeah, that's not bad. That's pretty, pretty damn good. All right, so that's now on. Now we have to get the insulator on the back. So these bits go on here. That goes back on there like that. And then there's a set of bolts that go on there. Those nuts that has to go there that's our little spacer which pushes it back down again and stops it from shorting out there and then we've got a washer a spring washer and a nut on there washer springer and nut goes on there Now, if you ever have to do something like this, I've done this one probably quicker than I've done any in the past. This one seems to have gone quite smoothly. Usually it takes me up to two hours to do each one. Okay. Top piece goes back on. <clears throat> the little prongs forward. That's the... Uh, hang on, it's the other way around. No, it's that one around. That's the piece which mates with the arcing horn in the switch group when it gets put in and holds it in position. Right, that's the top half assembled. Now comes the bottom half. Now this is where we have to test as we go, so we'll get our little half inch thimble and we shall get the plumber's tape put some plumber's tape on that thread because we don't want it to leak we want to be able to hear if there's any air leaks in the valve itself we don't want to hear if there's air leaks in the in the nipple that we're using to get put the air in we want to make sure we can only hear the air leaks from the valve so we just put that in there. First thing we do is we get the bottom valve and we put that back in. That sits in there. The little unit sits in there. This is the off valve. Put that in there. Put that in there. And that does up. And you can see how you can move that around. We're just going to do that up temporarily and we're just going to put the air on see if it leaks or if it blows past it all, which it probably will. Let's see how we go. And as you can hear, 
there is a little bit of blow past on the off valve. Not much. Okay, let's try it out. That's a leak on this thing. Okay, I'm going to pass that. <clears throat> so we shall pass that one, leave it as it is, and assemble the rest of the valve. Don't forget that these pins can be replaced from the front of the group later. All we're looking for at the moment is just to get it working properly so that we know that it is definitely okay at the time of test. Okay, first thing to go back on is this little valve here, or the top of the valve seat that goes back onto there. As I've said before, this switch has gone surprisingly easy. I haven't had any specific problems with it, which is rare. Every other switch I've had has had some frustrating problem with it. I haven't been able to undo something. I haven't been able to do something up. Something hasn't worked. Quite often what happens is this, this block here, the valve block is damaged inside, so therefore it keeps blowing past. Doesn't matter which pin I put in, it still blows past. So then I have to change the whole block for another one. Okay, so what we do with these, we just give them a bit of a dry off. Now this one's actually got a fairly good cotton covering on it. But what we've been doing to all of them is we've been just giving them a layer of insulating tape over the top. So the way we do that is we just get a bit of roll of tape, hold the end on it and just go around and wrap it on itself. You will find that you have to wrap it in on itself because it won't readily adhere to the cotton, particularly if it's infused with Kero like this one is. But it will quite happily stick to itself. Usually two Two wraps is enough, just gives it a layer of insulation and protection. There's our rejuvenated coil, okay. Don't forget the insulating plate that sits on top of the insulating plate like that. And then this little valve, this thing here, with that little piece there. Before I put that on, I'm just going to drop a little bit of oil on that thread. Like so. There's a little key way there to line it all up. We just find the thread and we put it in there. There she goes. Just sits there comfortably. Get the big spanner. And just comfortably hand tight it doesn't need to be any tighter than that just just comfortably hand tight it's more than enough okay now what we will do is we will just put this pin in and we'll just do another test with it like that before we go any further It sounds all right to me. Okay, this goes back on over the top of there. These can be difficult to get on. You have to get them in just the right position and twist them around to get them in just the right position. Sometimes tapping them to line up. So one screw goes in there. I do recommend not tightening that up because we have to get the other side to line up and look at that, it's nowhere near it. Okay. This is going to need a bash. Or at least a bit of leverage. There we go. That's on. Okay, so we're nearly there. We're just going to slip that, oh it's a bit wet, I'm just going to dry that off, still got a little bit of caro on it, just 
just dry that off. In it goes. This goes on top and you click it, turn it down all the way. Hear that clicking? To the last click. You can't tip in, you can't turn it anymore, then you come back to the last click. So I can't turn that anymore, come back to the last click and leave it there. Okay, that switch is complete and we're just going to do some final tests including an electrical test. So we put the air back on. Pretty good. Need to get our 120 volt DC source for testing. Switch it on and then test the electrical side. And I must say that's working quite nicely. Now what I like to do here is I like to work it pretty well in just to get all that grease around there again. Have a close look at the uh, action of the switch. Make sure the contact is closing on a square with the top. positive action and as you can hear there's no when it's on there's no leaking except for the inlet here which is leaking a little bit and then there's no leaking on the outside either so that's good both on and off have solid action and there's no air leaks. So there we go. I'll just turn that on and we'll switch that off so that it discharges the power supply. Okay, disconnect the air. HET 10th of 22 is what gets written on there. And that switch is now complete, ready to be wrapped and taken back and put in the switch group at U2. See you later.